Richard Hooper and this is SAT TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Andreas from MD SATCOM. Andreas, thanks for joining us. It's an important you. day, you've launched Skywan 5G. What is it? <laughs> In our opinion, I think it's something groundbreaking new. It is, we call it the one, the mastermind of SATCOM network. Why the one? Because everything is already built in. It has the full functionality and the end customer decides at the end of the day how he is going to use this equipment. All the intelligence is inside and that's the reason why we say the one, the mastermind of Satcom Networks. Now it's been a long time in development. Why is it so important to the market? For Endis Satcom, it brings us to the next generation of Satcom Networks. It is something which allows the end customer to develop over the time along the customer needs. Assume you start with a small network, you have the SkyOne 5G deployed, and then the customer experience, he needs to grow, he needs to change from a star-based network to a mesh network. All this you can do simply by activating through software. So we have built in a lot of functionality and complexity. That's the reason why it took a little bit of time. But it gives now the customer the benefit that he can buy it now and decide later how he is going to use it. Now, is this a unique product or is there any competition out there for a similar sort of... I have not seen any product in the market which is comparable especially because the architecture is in one single unit. It could be used as a hub, as a remote, as a master station, and all the competitors, you have to decide where's the hub, and then you have a number of remotes. Here, we start, let's say, with 20 remotes. One will be assigned as being the master. Half a year later, one of the remotes there's a lot of traffic where the customer is successful, he wants to have a subnetwork. So he says this remote becomes a hub of a subnetwork. Then you decide later on, another half a year, these links should be interconnected, not through a star technology, uh, topology, but through a mesh connectivity, only with a single hub. And this is going to save money because the installed equipment is ready to use for all the application and in a star based topology normally you have double hub when you have the connection from rooftop to rooftop with the sky one you can make a single hub and this saves bandwidth satellite capacity and by this reduces the total cost of ownership by the architecture of NDSATCOM's 5G. So who are the type of companies you, or customers you're going to be targeting? On the one hand side, our customer base is very well known for military, for governmental, for commercial set, uh, satellite networks. Once it's a closed user group, air traffic control networks, governmental ministries of foreign affairs. So when you have closed user groups, ND Satcom was very well known, and this is one element we are targeting as well as in the future. But it's more and more important for us to address the service providers. So the 5G is ready for the service provider, which means big networks where the service provider has multiple end customers in virtual networks. So our 5G is also incorporating a router in the one, it is not only a SATCOM modem, it incorporates as well the IP router, which means you have not additional hardware aside, it is integrated. And you can have virtual routing capabilities which gives a very efficient usage of the bandwidth. And this is where the satellite providers are very interested in the 5G. It is exactly in their business model we want to address as well in the future. Now there's obviously a cost-saving implication to your customers with the yes. use of Skyway 5G. Is there actually a figure on that that you, you know that you're projecting that they can save over the course of, you know? It depends very much. 
what is the requirement from the end customer and there's not one figure because it is so flexible that he can save a long time just to give you a few examples as it's one hardware you have only one spare part handling you do not need to have a spare part pool for the hub and another spare part pool for the remote it's just one now if it's a big network it is very efficient to reduce the spare parts at the same time the logistic is much easier it's just one ordering number so in the SAP it could be pretty easy to save money as well or it is one training you do not need to train different people for different products you train it just on the 5G and you can use it as remote as a hub and the training is the same the usage is the same the look and feel is the same the network management is the same the network management you do not pay in addition like with many other competitors it is given for free to the end customers and he can use it as often as he wants so he can give to each and every installer a software application and everybody is capable to make the network configuration online or even offline so there are many elements where the operator can save money I would assume he can reduce his operation cost at least by half All right. I'm pretty sure so you've pushed back the boundaries with this new product where do you go next <laughs> well uh, for us the key future area for investment is in the mobility you have seen maybe on our booth that we have already provided today three partnerships for Manpack Solutions. Actually, we think it goes even beyond. In 10 years, 15 years, 25 years from now, I think on each and every car on the roof, you will have a phased array antenna. And by this, each and every car is capable to be part of a subcom network. Now, assume a billion of cars having a satellite interconnection. It is changing the entire communication world. Now the question is, when will it come? For me, it's not so much the question whether it will come or not, it's only when. Because if you think that the SETCOM network will be there in any case, it must be there. There's no replacement in the middle of nowhere. There's no replacement in disaster recovery. All the other fixed networks, backbone networks, mobile networks are going to disappear if something is going to happen. The SETCOM network is there. Now with the high throughput satellites, with the low orbit satellites, you bring massive on bandwidth into the space. And then it happens the same like with the DSL. It gets commodity. The price goes down, and when the network is there, we have massive of bandwidth, it will grab its room. It will go to the fixed network, but a fiber optic is always better when it comes to high bandwidth. There you have gigabyte. But in the mobile network, there's the real competition. And the question is, is the SATCOM capable to take away the customer from the mobile network and bring it into a different ecosystem. Let's assume Google, they're launching satellites. These satellites will carry the, the communication capability. They're going to use this for driverless, driver, um, for cars without drivers. Yeah. Now, if all the cars are interconnected with the satellite communication, and having a second connectivity through VLAN, why do you need any longer any mobile operator? Because the mobile network is not a mobile network. It's a fixed network where we move through the antennas. Now in the vision I've just mentioned, the antennas move to the sky. And the antennas on the ground, on the cars, they are moving themselves, so the mobile networks itself become mobile. 
this is something interesting. But it's still a challenge, isn't it? Absolutely. Convincing people that satellite really is a viable alternative. Is that, is that a challenge that we're still going to face in a year, two years? I think, let's look 25 years back. It was 1990. It was just the introduction of ISDN. Nobody talked about DSL, a few. We had about 80,000 subscribers for the CNET mobile network. What happened in 25 years? Now, in 25 years, in 2040, I think it's tomorrow, and we will face such a change in the industry. It is not in the next year, no. Not in five years. But in 15 years, maybe, I'm pretty sure, we will have a different way of communication. And the SETCOM has the chance to go out of a niche and become a player in the center of the mass market. Never somebody, somebody thought in the past about having SATCOM as a commodity. But with the high throughput satellites, with the low orbit satellites, they are discussing new launch technologies. The Solov aeroplane, which just are going around the world, could be a technology where you bring communication capability in 15, 20 kilometers, unmanned, flying there, being there, providing capability mm -hmm. of gigabyte interconnection. I think the SETCOM is a very interesting industry with a chance to step out of the niche and to be in the center of the public communication capabilities. Andreas, thank you very much. I thank you.